This video is going to go over some percentage problems. Uh, so if you don't have a really good uh, basis for percentages, perhaps go back and either find one of mine, find one of somebody else's, but get a really good idea as to what a percentage is, how it's defined, how it's used, that sort of thing. Um, the fun part that I like to tell people is that uh, it, there's no difference between taxes and commission. They're like, what? There's no difference, mathematically, between paying a tax or paying a commission. Or earning a commission or earning a tax. <laughs> so it depends on which side of the coin you're on, really. But mathematically, they are, they are calculated identically. So here's a, for instance here, this is a commission. So the idea behind that is you take the thing of value, so whatever the thing is, I'll say, um, oh, I don't know, let's call it uh, the amount. So we'll call it A for amount. And then you're gonna multiply that by whatever your commission rate is. So let's call that R. And then what you're gonna get out from that is you're going to get how much commission you've received. C. That's that's it. That that's how it is. That's how all the commissions work. Now taxes work completely differently. They work by taking the amount that the thing is worth, multiplying it by the tax rate, and then you pay your tax. That's how much tax you pay. That looked strangely identical to it. Weird. <laughs> it's probably some kind of a some kind of a. Uh, a tie that binds them. All right, here we go. A sales a saleswoman's salary is two thousand dollars, plus seven percent of all sales, over five thousand. What is her income if she sold eleven thousand seven hundred forty dollars? Well, all right. So what's the amount? Well, she starts off. Now this, remember, this is commission. This is commission. This is not. If she sells nothing, she gets two thousand dollars. Even if no sales, I mean, you can argue about the legitimacy and the business strategy of that, but I mean, this is just what the problem says. All right, so you get two thousand dollars, and then seven percent of anything over five. Well, that's not so bad. So we're going to take our 2,000. We're going to assume that we sell more than, we're, we're going to assume that we get some kind of a commission. So we would add that on to whatever we're going to do. Now, commission is the amount times the rate. The rate is in decimal format. It is not in percentage format. Math doesn't percentage. So percent is actually a, a, a kind of a shorthand. It's a cheat. It's a, it's a lazy man's way of writing seven over a hundred. That's what, that's where the Latin translates out of is quite literally percent means over a hundred or out of a hundred. So here we go. The amount she makes commission on is anything over $5,000. She sold 11,740, but she doesn't get commission on the first 5,000 of that. So we subtract that off. Then we're going to multiply that by the rate, and this rate is 0 0.07. So 7% as, as a decimal or a fraction, either one will work. That's going to equal her commission, but this is going to be her total pay. The reason it's going to be her total pay or total income is that this part here this is the commission. This part here, I can get a contrasting amount here. That was her base salary. If if nothing else, she's gonna pull two grand. Alright. So let's get it going. Uh, it's it's all up to you on how you want to do it. I'll have to put up, pull up a calculator because unfortunately I can't do this with my head. So I would just go ahead and snag some calculator-ish thing here. Cheapy calculator on the phone will work just fine. 
Now, I don't trust phone calculators. They don't usually follow the order of operations, so I'm going to force the issue by following the order of operations. So I'm first going to calculate 11,740 minus 5,000. If you can do that in your head, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to write down 2,000 plus. Now, I'm going to rewrite this slightly, because just to use parentheses, but 0 0.07 for the 7% times, and 6740 is what she gets commission on. This is her income. So now we need to find what is 7% of that. So we multiply that by 0 0.07. That gives us 471.8. So here we got $2,000 plus 471.8, but it's 0 0.80. And then we just simply add those two things together. And that's going to give us 2471. 80 was her total income for whatever period of time that was. And that's it. That, that's how you do it. Uh, if you want to do it in chunks, that's perfectly fine too. I highly recommend it. Uh, ultimately, something like this might be worthwhile, especially if you're looking for jobs and you get multiple offers. You may want to check the benefits packages. If you are in sales, commission is a huge portion of that. Um, if you can get, it depends on what your needs are. So this can help you decide, should I take job A or job B or job C? Which one will pay the best? Who knows? I mean, if you're in a depressed housing market and you're a realtor and a realty agency will uh, will pay you, you know, $1,500 for showing up and having a breath of life, that might be the way to go because you're going to be guaranteed a paycheck. However, if you're in a hot market, you typically will end up with a lower commission with a guaranteed paycheck. So in that case, you might want to go with a higher commission and, and no guarantee. It's, it's entirely up to the, situ the situation. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the last one here. I love these. They can be done in so many different ways. A student missed six problems on a science test and received an 85%. How many problems were on the test? Assume that all problems had the same weight. If they didn't, we don't know. Because if you missed six of the really heavy problems, then you would, you're getting a different score than if you missed six of the light problems. There are two main ways that I, that I show people how to do this. The first way is in, is in the negative, and I'll explain in a second here. The second way is in the positive. The positive actually looks nastier. So, how many problems were on the test? I have no idea. So let's say they're X. Number of probs on test. Again, look at that. I, what am I supposed to find? It's the first thing I'm going for. Then I tend to read the problem. When presenting it to other people, I, I typically will read the problem first, but in my head, I'm already moving on to the end of it to find out what I'm looking for. All right, so now let's take a look at this and say he missed uh, a student, he or she, it doesn't really matter, but they missed six problems on a test and received an 85%. So how many problems were on the test? Well, when you receive an 85%, that's how much you got correct. That's percent correct. So you can only get up to 100 which means that you must have missed whatever the difference is between them. So if I look at this, I missed 15%. 15, whoop, 15% of X missed. Now, the reason I do this is because you have two competing thoughts. 85%, that is the amount that you got correct. 6 but you missed 6 problems. The two do not agree. One is talking about it in the positive, the 85%, one is speaking of it in the negative, the missed 6 problems. So you have to get them both to agree. Whether or not you subtract off the missed 6 problems to find out how many problems you got right or you subtract off the 85% that you got correct to find out you missed 15%, it doesn't matter which way you go. I find this way to be slightly easier. So, I can set up a proportion here and say, well, 15%, 15% 15 
must be the same as six, the number of problems I missed, out of however many there are, x. That's fine. So if I can cross multiply here, I get 15x is equal to 600. And if I divide by 15, I get 40. So there must have been 40 problems on the test. And notice, instantly I get my, my the value of my variable. I'm done at this point. It's over. Let it go. Sing the song. So I can go back and check the 40, but the 40 is not going to make any sense unless I go back and say, okay, I missed six problems. So 40 minus 6 is 34. So I got 34 out of 40, so divided by 40. Is that, in fact, 85%? And if you can read that, probably not. But anyway, if you can read that, it does actually turn out to be 85%. So now let's go in the positive direction. I am going to box this off. We'll box off the easy part. And then we'll come over here and we'll do it the hard way. So I missed six problems. So now I have to subtract the missed six problems off of the number that I attempted. So the number right, this is the formula we use, by the way, typically. The number correct divided by the number possible gives us our decimal, OK? That gives us our decimal percentage. Decimal percentage. The reason why I say decimal percentage is it's going to be something over 100. So it would be like some kind of question mark over 100. That's that's what it would refer to. So if this were point, point 0.38, it would be 38 over 100. That's the equivalent fraction. The number of correct problems, though, is the number of problems that I attempted, the, the total number available, minus the number I missed. So in this particular instance, we're taking the number of problems that were possible on the test, we're subtracting off the six that we missed, and we're dividing that in order to find our percentage correct. We're dividing that by the number possible, which is x. That left us with an 85%. Now, look at the two. <laughs> look at these two. Which one would you rather do? The one from the negative, where you just kind of do a thing and divide by 15, you're done. Or this unholy mess. It doesn't really matter which one you do, but I obviously have some sort of a bias against the unholy mess. But you know what? We're going to do it anyway, because why not? Remember that when you cross multiply here, you're multiplying the whole piece. So that's going to all go in parentheses. So 100 times x minus 6 in parentheses is going to give me 85x. I distribute. That's going to give me 100x minus 600 is equal to 85x. Here, because I want to save time, I don't care if it's negative. I know that eventually my answer has to be positive. So as long as that's true, we don't care. So I'm going to subtract 100x this time. When I do that, I get negative 600 is equal to negative 15x, which is really this statement here. Divide both sides by negative 15. And that's going to give me a positive 40. Negative divided by negative is a positive. And there's my answer. So see, you get the same answer either way. It doesn't really matter. But once you're done, you say, oh, well, x is 40. Well, what, what is x? I defined it. That's how I know I'm done. It asks for how many problems are on the test. I defined my variable x to be the number of problems on the test. That way, when I find x, it's over. I don't have to plug that back in and look for other things. You can test it, however. So I hope this helps. Uh, certainly leave a comment if you'd like, and I'll be sure to, to make some more. All right, thanks for watching.